the fasting person will have two rewards. So all of those headaches and those stomach cramps and the difficulty and struggles that we experience as we fast is not unrewarded. So we reach the end of the day and we've been fasting since 3.30 in the morning and now it's 10 at night or 9 at night and we grab that date and we first we make dua. This is a time of the dua is answered and we pray for all of our loved ones and we pray for our success and we pray for our akhirah and we pray for our parents and knowing this is a time when the prayer is answered, the tears start rolling down our face. And then we take that date and we put it into our mouth. And the sweetness, it starts permeating throughout our body. And we feel so good. And then we take that cold glass of water. And it's so cold, the glass is sweating. And before we drink it, we rub our finger on it to see the lines on it through the frost and we drink it and it just becomes part of us and we can feel it replenishing and refreshing our body and we're filled with bliss and then after this life that's like the fasting where we persevere through the hardship that comes in avoiding the haram we persevere through the hardship that comes through implementing the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We persevere through the, the trials and tribulation that the world inevitably brings to us. The people think they'll be left alone merely saying, we believe and they're not tested. We tested those who preceded them. And in order that Allah will show which of them are truthful and which of them are liars. So we persevered through those trials and our truthfulness was affirmed. And then we meet our Lord. Then we meet our Lord. How much joy are we going to have? How much joy are we going to have? How much happiness and bliss. There's no way to measure it. We mentioned this yesterday. There's no way to measure it that we know in this world. So fasting is patience and fasting conditions us for life. Another version of this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned every action of the human being Is something happening here that I don't know about? Uh, alhamdulillah. So another uh, version of this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that every action the human being does is a source of compensation or recompense, kafara, expiation for him. And Allah Ta'ala says, except fasting, that is mine, I will reward him for that. Sufyan bin Uyayna, one of the great scholars of this ummah, one of the teachers of Imam al-Shafi'i, rahimahum Allah, may Allah have mercy on both of them. He said, based on this version of the hadith, the exemption is from fasting not being a source of expiation for the servant. So, in other words, everything we do that reward Yom Al Qiyamah, people can come and take that reward. So the people we've wronged and the people we've oppressed Yom Al Qiyamah, they will come and take from our good deeds. A, a hadith mentions, He will take from their good deeds and take from their good deeds. And if there's anything that we still owe, Allah Ta'ala will bear that and recompense the person. And then after everything's gone, the reward of our prayer is gone because of the people we've wronged. The reward of our Quran is gone. The reward of our awrad and azkar is gone. The reward from our zakah is gone. The reward from our hajj is gone. Everything is gone. 
at that point, Allah Ta'ala will return to us the reward from our fasting. Because the fasting is, out, is not ours. It's Allah Ta'ala's. إِلَّا الصِّيَامْ فَإِنُّهُ لِي And he says, وَأَنَا أَجْزِي بِي And I will recompense him with that. So the fasting is not ours. And because the fasting is not ours, no one could take that reward from us. And Allah Ta'ala will return it to us. وَأَنَا أَجْزِي بِي he gives it to us, and on the basis of our fasting alone, many of us will enter Jannah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. So this should encourage us to fast, and encourage us to look forward to meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah ta'ala gives us the reward for our fast, and He enters us into Jannah on that basis alone. This is from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is from the greatness of the fast and the virtue of the fast and the reward of the fast. There's a gate in, uh, into paradise called Rayyan. Only the fasting people will work, enter through that gate. May Allah ta'ala bless us if we don't enter through any of the other gates. May He bless us to enter through that gate. Brothers and sisters, Ramadan is a great opportunity for us. We say in conclusion, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned whoever passes through the month of Ramadan and is not forgiven, that person is ruined. He's ruined. Why? Because there's so many opportunities for us to be forgiven. Allah Ta'ala or the Prophet mentioned Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam من قام من صام رمضان إيمانا واحتسابا غفر الله ما تقدم من ذنبه. Whoever fasts the month of Ramadan with sincere faith, anticipating a reward, their sins will be forgiven. Many scholars say they're lesser sins. من قام رمضان إيمانا واحتسابا غفر الله ما تقدم من ذنبه. Whoever fasts the month of or stands for prayer during the nights of Ramadan. With sincere faith, anticipating a reward, their sins are forgiven. Man qama layla tal qadr, iman and wahtisab and ghufir Allah ma taqadam min dhambi. Whoever stands for worship during part of the night of power, with sincere faith, anticipating a reward, all of their sins are forgiven. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, man wa dhakurullahi fi Ramadan maghfurun lah. Whoever remembers Allah abundantly in Ramadan, they will be forgiven. Man fattara sa'iman, ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhambi. Whoever gives the fasting person something to break their fast with, even a date, their sins are forgiven. Abu Hurairah relates that everyone be, will be forgiven in Ramadan. Yughfaru fi Ramadan illa man ya'ba, except the one who refuses to be forgiven. فَقَالُوا وَمَنْ يَأْبَى يَا أَبَى هُرَيْرَةَ And they said, who would ever refuse, O Abi Hurairah? They said, he said, مَنْ يَأْبَى إِنْ يَسْتَغْفِرَ اللَّهِ The one who refuses to ask Allah to be forgiven. So brothers and sisters, during the month, ask Allah to forgive your sin. And your sins will be forgiven. Ask Allah. Don't be amongst those who refuse. Don't be amongst those recalcitrant elements. In conclusion, we mention all of us come into this life and those who are Muslim were given an opportunity to know the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we're given an opportunity to let other people know about the guidance of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and let people know about the richness of Qur'an which was recited so beautifully in various uh, styles of recitation by the Qari before. We need to ask ourselves, brothers and sisters, what have we done to let people know about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? And not so much through our words, but through our actions and through our state of being. He's an example for us, meaning before we open our mouths to tell people how great Muhammad is, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, our lives and our character and our state of being and our comportment 
should tell them about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ لَا أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ A most excellent example. What is an uswa? An uswa is to be imitated. To be imitated. He says, Allah Ta'ala reminds us, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّنَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Say to them, O Muhammad, قُلْ If indeed you love Allah, إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّنَ اللَّهُ We are people that say, I love Allah, I love Allah. Are they following? Are we following the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? That's a question all of us should answer. And follow him in the fullness, not just following him in some superficial manifestations of his sunnah, which are very important. So the miswak is important, the beard is important, the hijab is important. But the character is also important. Are we following the character of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Are we displaying his gentleness? Are we displaying his forbearance? Are we displaying his courage? Are we displaying his patience? Are we displaying his trustworthiness? Are we displaying his fidelity? Are we displaying his love for the people? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He loved the people. And because he loved the people, and he loved this Ummah, Yawm Al Qiyamah, he's not concerned with himself. He's concerned when all the people are concerned with themselves. And they're crying, nafsi, nafsi. He's crying, ummati, ummati. So are we showing that concern for the ummah, for the poor, the downtrodden, the oppressed, for those who are denied food, denied clothing, denied shelter, those who are being bombed and brutalized? Are we showing our concern for them? This is the way of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And reflecting his way, reflecting his character, we should be reflecting that concern. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you. May Allah ta'ala bless this gathering. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you during the month of Ramadan. May every one of us go from the month of Ramadan maghfurun. All of us go from this month forgive, forgiven. And may we celebrate a joyous Eid and a blessed Eid. And may Allah ta'ala bless us to come back to this place. إِنَّ الَّذِي فَرَضَ عَلَيْكَ الْقُرْآنَ لَرَدُّكَ إِلَّا الْمَعَادِ May Allah who has uh, made the Qur'an obligatory for us to follow and to learn and to adhere, to adhere to, may He bless us to come back to this place. And may He bless us to come back as believers. And may He bless us to come back when we meet again with our faith enhanced and uplifted and strengthened. May we be better believers more beneficial to the people, more beneficial to each other. Wa akhra da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala sayyidil mursaleen wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een wa sallallahu ala sayyidil muhammad Allahumma aghfin al-muslimin wa al-muslimat wa al-mu'minin wa al-mu'minat al-ahyai minhum wa al-amwat Rabbana la tawzid kulubana ba'da idh hadaytana wa hablana min ladunka rahma innaka anta al-wahhab ربنا فرق علينا الصبر وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم بارك لنا فيما بقي من شعبان اللهم بارك لنا فيما بقي من شعبان اللهم بارك لنا فيما بقي من شعبان وبلغنا جميعا شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان وجزاكم الله خيرا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته